In the previous video, we learned about the importance of having precise divvying up of chromosomes to produce gametes, sperm into egg. That precision is accomplished through the process known as meiosis. Meiosis begins with an ovarian or testicular cell that has 46 chromosomes, like any other body cell. Prior to the beginning of meiosis, each chromosome replicates so that there, so that there are essentially 92 chromosomes. The replica copies, called sister chromatids, remain attached to one another. Meiosis involves two rounds of nuclear and cell division. The first round of cell division is called meiosis I. The second round of cell division is called meiosis II. Prophase I marks the beginning of meiosis. Just like during prophase in mitosis, in prophase I of meiosis, the chromosomes condense, the nuclear membrane breaks down, and the spindle apparatus begins to form. In prophase I of meiosis, the homologous chromosomes physically pair up and connect with one another. What are homologous chromosomes? Homologous chromosomes have the same types of genes in the same location along their lengths. Diploid organisms, like humans, have pairs of homologous chromosomes, one from mom, the other from dad. When the homologous chromosomes separate, they can exchange parts. This is known as crossing over, which will be described in the next video. As the cell progresses through pro-metaphase I, the chromosomes complete their condensation and the spindle apparatus completes its formation. In metaphase I, homologous pairs of chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell. Remember, in metaphase of mitosis, individual chromosomes lined up down the middle of the cell. In anaphase I, the homologous chromosomes are separated towards opposite poles of the cell. If we focus on one chromosome, for example chromosome 1, this separation means that the chromosome that came from mom moves towards one side of the cell and the chromosome that came from dad moves to the other side of the cell. In telophase 1, that separation is complete such that one side of the cell has a haploid set of chromosomes and the other side of the cell has the other haploid set of chromosomes. The cell then undergoes cytokinesis to form two haploid cells. These cells will be genetically different from each other. Maternal chromosome 1 will be in one cell, paternal chromosome 1 will be in the other. Maternal chromosome 2 will be in one cell, paternal chromosome 2 will be in the other, and the same goes for all the other chromosome pairs. Each chromosome is still present in two copies, sister chromatids. That's why they still look like little X's. In the second round of meiosis, meiosis II, each cell undergoes another round of nuclear and cell division. The processes are very similar to mitosis, which is why our slide shows the processes of mitosis positioned below meiosis II. In this process, chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell uh, in metaphase II, then sister chromatids separate to opposite poles in anaphase II and telophase II, just like in anaphase and telophase of mitosis. After cell division, we end up with four haploid cells. Each cell has one of each chromosome. It will mature to become an egg in females or a sperm in males. When sperm with one of each chromosome fertilizes egg with one of each chromosome, the fertilized egg will have two of each chromosome, the correct chromosome content for a diploid organism. So the products of meiosis are four cells that are haploid. These cells are also genetically different from one another. That is in contrast to the genetical identicalness of the products of mitosis. In the next two videos, we'll talk about the two main meiotic processes that lead to genetic variation, crossing over and independent assortment.